In this video, we're going to take a look at the transformation called stretches. And stretches, unlike a translation or reflection, stretches actually change the shape of the graph. So when the output of a function, let's say y equals f of x, is multiplied by a non-zero constant or non-zero number, a, then we would have y equals a times f of x. Now we can divide both sides by a, and we would have y divided by a equals f of x. So in other case, whether we have a times f of x or y divided by a, this will give me a vertical stretch of the graph about the x-axis by a factor of a. Now, if a is less than 0, I recall that if it is negative, remember that the graph is also reflected in the x-axis. So a positive y value that is now negative means that it would reflect over the x-axis. The mapping notation, if the original was x, y, then our new point would then be x, comma, a times y. Now, let's say that it was the input of a function being multiplied. So this was output. What about the input? So if we have y equals f of x, and the input is multiplied by non-zero constant b, we use a different letter, the result will be y equals f of b times x. And this will give me a horizontal stretch because it is associated or multiplying x. Now, you have to be careful because uh, when it's multiplied by x by a factor, um, so it is b times x, but if you look back here, if you notice how this y was divided by a, and here b is times x, but remember that when it's y divided by a, it's actually a factor of a. So here, because it's b times x, this actually will be a factor of 1 over b. If b is less than 0, then the graph is also going to be reflected in the y-axis. So because um, our factor is 1 over b, for our mapping notation, we're going to say that x is divided by b, and since it's a horizontal stretch, nothing will happen with the y. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Um, so given the function um, that's drawn here, transform the graph of f of x to sketch the graph of g of x. State any invariant points and the domain and range. So we have this graph here, which is like a zigzag, and we can see that there's a 3 here. So this 3, because it's being multiplied by f of x, we know that one's vertical. And I'm going to be more specific than just saying it's a stretch. So because it's vertical and it's 3 times my original y value, it's also going to be actually an expansion. So it's going to be a vertical expansion by 3. So let's take a, all these points wherever there's a corner. And also, it's nice to take the ones on the intercepts. What happens when these y values, because remember it's vertical, are multiplied by 3? So this y value is 0. Actually, all of these roots here are 0. So nothing actually happens to them. So we actually only need to take a look at these three points. So this has a y value of 3. So the new y value will be 9. So we put a new point at 9. This y value right now has a value of negative 3. So times it by 3. That will give me negative 9. And this value value here has a value of 2, so I times that by 3, and that will give me 6. So I'm going to grab my ruler to connect my new points. And remember the ones on the x, the y, sorry, the x-axis, they don't move because 0 times anything is still going to be 0. Oops. Okay. 
Okay, not sure why the line's not drying. And last one over here. And there we have the graph. Now we can see that the invariant points, which I didn't draw very well, are these roots here. And so this first one's nice and easy. It's negative four, zero. The second one here is one, zero. Now this last one is kind of tricky because it's not right on an integer. So if I actually wanted to figure out what that was, let's say that I can draw a triangle here. So we know this is five over two. Then I know that this here has a value height of three. And then I'm trying to find out what this X value is there on the bottom. So that would be X. I can cross multiply, I get five X equals six. So X equals six over five or 1.2. So since this is 1.2, I'm gonna add that value to the four. So this gives me the last root of 5.2 and zero. The domain of my new function g of x goes from negative four all the way to six. So I can write this in this formal notation here. So it goes from negative four, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to six, where x is a real number. For the range, uh, the lowest number is negative nine, and we can see that it goes all the way up to positive nine. So y is such that it is negative nine less than y, less than or equal to nine, and y is a real number. All right, let's go into the second question. Um, in the second question, we can see that um, we have g of x, and then the x is being multiplied by negative two. So two things are actually happening here. Um, we have the negative sign, and remember the negative means that we have a reflection over the y-axis. And the two, now remember, that when it's two, we need to take the reciprocal. So this is going to be a horizontal because it's beside the x. And because it's reciprocal, it's gonna be by half. So when it's half, we call that a compression because it's less than one. So this is called a horizontal compression by a half. So what's happening is that we have to take all these points, which are endpoints here, and we need to reflect them over the y-axis and then half it. So what would this look like? I'm gonna use a different color so you can see. So we have negative four. I need to reflect it over the y-axis. So that would be now positive four and then compress it by half. So that becomes two. Go to the next point. So negative two, reflect it over the y-axis. So that becomes positive two and then we need to compress it by half so that becomes one so remember, we're looking at the x value because it's the x's that are changing the y value is staying the same um, i have a y value sorry i have an x value of one i reflect it over the x-axis to give me negative one and then i half it to give me negative a half I have an x value of four. I reflect it to be negative four, half that, and that becomes negative two. And then lastly, I have positive six. I reflect that over the y-axis to give me negative six, compress that by half, and that gives me negative three. All right, so then I can connect these five points. Remember what they were, and so I'm actually gonna go in the order. So I drew that one first. And then I came down and I plotted this one here, down there, and then I'm gonna go back up. 
there's my graph. Now let's take a look at the invariant points here. Now you can see the only invariant point, the point that didn't change, this time was on the y-axis. And that point is 0, 1. The domain of this graph goes from negative 3 all the way to positive 2. So we can write that as x, such that it's from negative 3 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2, where x is a real number. And for the range, we can see the lowest value is negative 3, and the highest value is positive 3. So we have y such that it goes from negative 3 all the way to positive 3, where y is a real number. And that's it.